I am Mazel. I'm joined by Cubby yet again. And after our first three game best of three, we're not done just yet. We have yet another best of three in front of us, and it should be a lot of fun. It is AoE versus Maryville University. And what a difference it feels like coming into this year for both of these teams, and especially a lot of the roster changes, but also just the mentality it feels like of a lot of these players coming in. That's funny, like the first game we had Mirage Alliance who made roster changes kind of late, and then Maryville who uh, awesome. changed things up a little bit uh, for game two. So we get both kind of, of the newest look teams in Challengers League uh, here today. And honestly, really interested to see what happens with Maryville because they're in the unique spot where of course with uh, you know their collegiate program, they have 10 really talented players that play League of Legends yeah. over like in, in that building, right? They, there are some good gamers over there. So uh, I, I'm more so interested to see like if that changes as the season goes on or if this is it. Mm. Uh, but I understand that we are starting off with AOE and this is a roster I'm kind of looking forward to seeing as well. I was going to say some good gamers on this side of the map too. We got Zamudo coming over in the top lane. Rose Thorn in the jungle. I still hold from last year one of the biggest brain pathing junglers in our league. O Nation making a comeback here for AoE. And then one of my favorite ever duos in the bot lane. It's Wixie Breezy back at it again yeah. together. I know the Cloud9 amateur days. If anyone remembers yeah. that from uh, 2020, they played with a jungler, uh, I believe, known as XU on that team, too. You know, I uh, think it was something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? he's doing all right. On the flip side, uh, we have Maryville University. Uh, they're actually being rocking two M's on their graphic. That's that's pretty neat, though. Uh, as things Gotta look love some a sponsors. Bit different for them. Uh, so, Yuji did not clone himself in the offseason. That's actually going to be <laughs> Niles in the top lane. Uh, and then, you know, the, you have the one M with, uh, you know, the straight lines and then the, the M with the arches. So we, we got some yeah. sponsors here from Mary, though. It's not bad. <laughs> so it is going to be Should Niles we, America's the top side. team, you know? Yeah, McDonald's yeah, America's team. McDonald's is team. Uh, <laughs> UG will be in the jungle this time around, which also probably one of my biggest pickups in the offseason. The fact that this man is now under the umbrella of Maryville it's destiny at this point for him to make it to pro play. Now we also have Spyrax who's going for the top lane into mid lane. Scary Jerry and Zyko making a comeback from last year. And it uh, should be a lot of fun to see those two go at it. I think they grew a lot as the season went on. They needed to grow, but they did some growing and that's good. Uh, Zyko is someone that uh, you know I actually hold in decently high regard as support. Kind of interested to see him go up against Breezy. Uh, but it's also fun to have you know, a spot lane that did play together now for almost a full calendar year. Uh, in Maryville with Scary Jerry and Zyko going up against a bot lane that was reunited in Wixie and Breezy. Should be a lot of fun. A little bit of test of metal here in the 2v2 bot lane, but we do have draft ready and raring to go. So let's go ahead and get underway. We got Maryville on the blue side for game number one. Actually, it looks like it switched to the last second. AoE on the blue side for game number one. Maryville on the red side. We already get the Azir band off the table, so that should be a consistent factor, it feels like, in this series and maybe even in ACL as a whole. Yeah, I mean, Azir, very strong. Uh, also for me, Onat, I think a little bit stronger on some of the other mages that aren't Azir. Like, uh, he likes the Victor and the Orianna quite a bit. And Onat, actually someone that had a, a really nice offseason for himself, too. Of course, Onat was on a team that actually got relegated uh, in Team Fish Taco from Challengers League. But he played in the most competitive Tier 3 event in the offseason over at Aegis. Uh, and their team actually took second to Winthrop University, uh, the Peach Cats. There were a lot of rotating faces from there. Yeah. Like, some of the old wildcard core was in there. Uh, but Onat played really well with those guys. I, I thought that he had some nice showings in that tournament as a mid laner and made his way back onto this AoE roster that we have some hopes for uh, this year. I think this AoE roster can contest for some of the top spots here as a whole, but also it's been really interesting for Onat. I know you are talking about him a little bit earlier, but yeah. like the fact that he was subbing in to tons of combines in the off season, like he's been very active and it, also proactive his social media he's been very active on there as well i love to see that in our players trying to build brand i messaged him i was like is it still o nation he said till i die so uh <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to keep that in mind as we move forward here but i'm excited to see this new aoe roster against our new maryville roster now speaking of those bands though that we started with earlier it is the nocturne the seraphine band by aoe and it is that senna ash who do you ban for Mary? Yeah, I know uh, Zamudo, of course, uh, someone that is uh, one of the stronger laners that we have uh, in the top lane in Challengers League. Cooking, man. 
Yeah, he, he for sure is on that uh, the circle <laughs> fireman tech. Uh, so that's going to be denied for him, at least in game one. Open things up. But uh, that does open up Rumble, which Zamudo, of course, was on a wild card uh, this past year. Uh, I, I thought Zamudo ended up playing really well uh, in, in quite a few of, of, of you know those games in summer uh, with Kiel. Rumble was one of his better champions, was one of the first players to really start abusing Rumble, who ended up being very strong after some changes, and gets his hands on it again. Uh, so look for AoE to put some pieces together to wombo combo with this Rumble in the top side. I love the Rumble for Zamudo. He also has just really good equalizer angles a lot of the time. I still, good miss the War good I still miss the Warwick top. I know it, I, I talked to him. He says, never happening again. Maybe one day in the future. You it never was know. A time fun is game. Well, <laughs> it was a fun game. You know what, Mazel? So wasn't. <laughs> Jenkins is in the league too. So we, 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 is, we, we, we still have a chance uh, for that. They got the dogs in them. Now we do have the Varus and the Jace locked in here. So a lot of poke potential coming through. If you're going to go with that more lethality Varus build that we have seen already today was the on hit build. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will say that that Jace likely to go top. We did see Dokla play that into Rich's rumble earlier in LCS, mm -hmm. but this is a flex pick uh, for Maryville with Spyrax and Niles, both very good Jace players. But man, Lucian Milio being given away. This is a very it's powerful big. duo. Uh, we've seen, we saw Milio ban pretty much the entirety of the games that we have seen today uh, in, in the first three and also even in LCS. I, I think Milio got through once or twice. Um, very contested pick at the moment. So uh, the Varus Renata, they're going to have to win that lane early or else things go haywire later. Yeah, I mean, no. I, I generally like the Renata in situation, but I think in this 2v2 specifically, it's going to be a little bit rough. Uh, but that is also why Lucian Emilio is so lauded right now because it mm -hmm. is just that strong. And you have, for me, it's when you give a decisive player a Lucian with Emilio or a Nami behind it, that makes the biggest difference. It's not the champion itself, but it's the timing windows and especially when you can punish. So I'm very much looking at Pixie Breezy. I feel like one of the yeah. best two we could have together to have a lot of strength in that bottom lane and Maryville's going to have to deal with that. Now we are in the second phase. We get the Akali band already against AoE, and the Vi ban towards Yuji. Uh, I mean, Vi is no surprise, given that you are rocking the Lucian Milio, and they don't have to worry about a Nautilus yet, so no more point and click. Also, I think it's kind of fun. You know, Wixie and Breezy reunited as a bot lane. They used to play together in Cloud9 Amateur. Uh, that was a team that did have Axu mm -hmm. on it, who is now, of course, in LCS. I did ask Wixie about, you know, coming back and being reunited. Uh, he's like, man, Breezy's gotten better since when I played with him, and he's already been so criminally underrated. So they're really trying to make waves for themselves as a bot lane this year. And uh, for Wixie, I mean, this is a return to Challengers League for him, too. Yep. Uh, spent a lot of time over in Korea uh, for the past year, pretty much grinding out in solo queue. And uh, he feels like that was the thing that was going to best equip him to be a good player moving forward. Really want to see his return to Challengers. If we see, you know, some of those, uh, you know, hands that he picked up over in Korea, or, you know, just, you know, practicing against a better ladder every single day, if that has paid off yeah. for Wixie. Love to see uh, Yuji going and picking up the Maokai here. I will say something. I talked to the Yuji uh, before we came into the match today, and something he really liked about the format changes with Fearless, he's like, oh, I get to, you know, play different champions. I, I don't have to play the same champion all weekend for one week, and it's one champion. I get bored. Well, we're back on the Maokai, so, <laughs> you know, we don't get the spice just yet, but I, you better watch it. You better watch it. Uh, it is the Zin Zhao as a response yeah. here by AoE. I want to see some uh, CC be picked up in the mid lane here for AoE. Uh, I, I think that Onat, I mean, this could be a decent game for something like Oriana, uh, just to mm -hmm. at least try and buy some space or try and find setup for the Rumble. I think the one thing, like, AoE has a lot of really high-tier champions right now, but there isn't a ton of setup for this Rumble, so... Uh, I think a Silas would be great here. You can just take Malachi ult, Varus ult, also extremely powerful that's uh, when so grabbed big. by Silas. So that's one way to find CC every fight. I, I actually like this pickup a lot coming out from AoE. We'll see what the response is uh, for Maryville. I like that a lot. I feel like it adds so yeah, much I, I to the I think they should Trist here. I, 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 Tristan is a pretty good pick here for Maryville, but... And uh, go Jay's top. They'd put a mid. Or, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Through, wait, yeah. <laughs> would be interesting though but I, it looks like it might just be the Cassante locked yeah. in so Niles gonna be piloting the Cassante into Hold Zamudo's on. rumble it could be Cassante mid I, I will say it's could be it could be, could be. but this is what not I not out of the wheelhouse I, I, I expect Jace mid yeah I think Spyrax's Jace is very good it's <laughs> so very good I want to see it again yeah. there were games last year where that man was 
<laughs> literally 1v9ing teams with the Jace Maokai combo. And it's like return to classic, it feels like, right? This is a, a combo that these two guys will know very well, right? Yuji and Spyrax have played together. I mean, it's wild to think that Yuji and Spyrax are on the same team again. They've right? run FlyQuest challengers for the past two years. Uh, Spyrax, of course, did start LCS for that one game. Uh, after that, Spyrax left. He went to Maryville University, so he's getting a degree in competing, uh, which is fantastic. But uh, I, I don't really know what Spyrax's aspirations are. But man, whenever I watch this guy play, always a good player. Has a champion ocean. He plays every archetype of mid laner well, whether it's Karma mid, a mage, a fighter, or something like this. Jace, Spyrax has game on everything. All right, everybody, we're going to need to take a big stretch here. Everybody get ready to go because we got a best of three kicking off here. And it is not Mirage Alliance versus Fear. It is AoE versus Maryville University. All right. Oh, we, we had some good luck. Have funds in the chat. I do like that. Uh, so as, cute. Yeah, it's always nice to be wholesome. And, and interesting enough, you know, first Malachi game that we have today. Rose Thorn, you know, someone, Mazel, that you said, always a very aggressive pather, loves to play off of his lane's priority. Definitely has some of that in this one, especially on that top side, as this Rumble pretty much gets a free lane against the Cassante. Yeah, you gotta be a little bit concerned around level six. You just can't get thrown <laughs> into the tower. But besides that, I mean, you are pushing and uh, making life pretty hard for this Cassante. Oh, no. <laughs> I think Niles gets like all of his L traded here. Does have that Q3 coming up, gives him the thumbs up. Traditional uh, wet noodle fight in the top lane, no big deal. But I want to look at the rest of the map, right? Yes, we talked about Rose Thorn's pathing. I think on the Xin Zhao, he's going to have to be very proactive, try to find an advantage for either Wixie or Onat early to leap off of that. Whereas Yuji can play a lot more reactive. He can play a lot more of, you know, clear wait for team fights and then use this kind of ranged poke composition to help enable them. Yeah, and I, I mean, even just at the start, like already on the back foot here for Maryville as Yuji, of course, was spotted on a ward. The both of our junglers are going to be going for those AoE camps being cleared out first. That's A-OK, -okay, but uh, this is all scouted out uh, by AoE, and Maryville uh, don't know where Rose Thorn is at yet. They could probably reasonably assume where he started, but um, interested to see, you know, who gets involved first, as we do have uh, a mirrored clear instead of a match clear first time today that we have had that. Um, and honestly, it does set up around mid lane decently well if each jungler is kind of going to go through mid uh, to shift sides. So could, could see some action there. I would be... Oh, oh nice. So really nice. Handshake early on. Definitely a one-sided handshake at that. And a first blood to Zyko. Throwing up the fly quest Evo Ouch. too. Uh, I, I mean, that, that hurts, man. Uh, you know, Breezy, he had the flash. He wanted to save it. Thought that he might be able to sneak out of that. But goes down. Free first blood. Uh, only bummer is that it's on Renata, but we're gonna get another look. I mean, this I is see how this heavy just steps up I mean, too far. Yeah, I guess. this is just an oopsie coming out from AOE. That's not not the start you want. It is not, and especially uh, the momentum, right? We have this duo who's coming back together after so long, and we have this duo who's been together. Scary Jerry and Zyko uh, doing very well early on. Synergy working very well early. Spyrax did have to burn his flash mid, so that'll be revisited for sure. Yeah, Onat missed the cannon for that one, so. Uh, Spyrax, though, of course, no flash. Do have the shift. Yuji did not go through mid as that wave was in, so gonna be a little bit ahead of the clear, but Rose Thorn just gonna summon her spell out. I also do want to point out Onat went with the potion. Uh, secondary. Oh, the triple elixir, so yeah. He does have the, the three potions that'll be coming up online, and they are little moments to use, and they each do their own thing, right? And this one specifically does the gain five true damage. He also has the minion, de minion dematerializer. Uh, so a lot of that lane focus, at least right now, for Onet. Yeah, you know what it does do at the end, though, for all of them, Azel? What? Gives you bonus gold. That's what we oh, like. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. we like. <laughs> Some money in our pockets here for the Onet. Now the question man. is, can you tell me what the other two potions do? Uh, well, Off the top of your I, head I without looking at I don't even know what this up. one does. One of them is minion damage, one of them is true damage, and then the other one is, I think, adaptive force. Yep. <laughs> oh, not bad. All right. Yeah, we, I, we, I believe, I think the third one is GQ. adaptive force. Yeah. Uh, I took it one time. It's so interesting. We just have potions pop into your, into your inventory. It's kind of interesting. It gives you those little, little, oh. feels like you're getting those outplays. Speaking of, though, Rose Thorn going for an outplay on Niles. Revisiting this top lane, the ghost will be popped, though. Niles, safe as a bird in a nest. Yeah, this wave state, though, is really tough. Uh, I'm interested to see if Yuji actually gets involved here, because Zamudo has kind of held this wave back. Uh, we'll start shoving towards Niles again, but 
uh, the ghost has been bled. Niall is also down a TP. Uh, so this is a kind of a tough lane state for him. Uh, Zamuda will get a really nice crash and be able to have a nice reset again. And Niall should continue to be on the back for the stop lane. Yeah, it's going to continue. I'm surprised you didn't use another word choice there. Uh, one that you had used last year. Uh, but, you know, maybe one of these days will come out. What? What, uh, what, what's that, Mazel? Because you said you know, he got his, his uh, you got his ghost bled, but there was a certain word that you used last year that uh. kind of broke me. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we don't bring that one up yet. Uh, the dragon and the grubbies are on the table, and so far we haven't really seen any movements that way. I think Yuji is in the prime position for the dragon star, but we're actually looking at mid lane for a little bit of movement from Breezy uh. as well. This is an icy moment as, oh. okay, Yuji's the one that gets engaged on by Rose Thorn and some poke back from Maryville. Oh, the handshake connect's not going to follow it up there. It actually is Zamudo coming down too. Zamudo does have that priority. They could look again with him. He doesn't have six yet. I think if Zamudo had six, then it is actually realistic to try and look. Or if Onan had six and was able to yoink that Malachi ult, maybe there's an angle, but not going to be the case. Said just a trade. Maryville has the stronger champs earlier in the game. Uh, at least on, on that bot side, the Varus Renata very much. Uh, you know, need a couple levels in that Lucian milieu before you get going. And, uh, Marksman weren't there yet, so uh, I think that trade a okay for Maryville, and they're gonna use the chunks they got in order to crack open a timer to take the first dragon. I like the map movement so far for Maryville there. I think taking advantage of it is very big, and especially when we were talking about the kind of competition, I wanted Rosethorn to be very proactive. And yes, he'll be taking the grubbies here, but Yuji is on the Maokai, and we've seen Maokai have so much space control, so much viability in front of those team fights. We'll see if that does come to bear, though Yuji's going to a little. He does have the smite. Oh, very close. Okay, good job, Yuji. Calculated, you know, he, he didn't yeah, need cool they didn't need the plants that existed behind him either the, the friend of the forest doesn't need any extra plants just need to take bonus resources He's all right gonna get the crab too. So uh, overall Maryville, I mean, I, I think your Maokai is farming here like that's good uh, Top point isn't too disastrous. That's fine mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm they need to really hit the angle when this poke comes online because when you do have this Jace Ferris it's all about playing with range. Like, there, there is no sustained damage here on the side of Maryville. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really want to see them continue to control these objectives. Stacking dragons is going to be very important for this team. Uh, if they don't do so successfully, it might get be really tough for them to find wins later in the game where uh, you know, Lucian Milio will be very big. As Mudo okay. going to burn that flash. Yeah. A little unfortunate there. Spyrax was playing pretty aggressively in mid lane. Does have a little advantage there too. So solo lane so far working out for Maryville. Zamudo playing a little bit more defensively now up here. But uh, should still have the, the benefit of the doubt as the rumble into the Cassante. That's like one of the few timers though where, you know, at least at this point of the game, you, you can get something as Cassante. So really nice that Niles actually did pick up that flash because now you can just ghost in. Uh, and of course, Maokai. Rumble has a lot of damage back, but that is a combo where you can look to get a kill. Oh, nah. And that's in a little bit of trouble oh, here. Big. Yuji finds him there. Nature's Grass come out, and Odat flashes over the wall, ends up making it out well alive. Done. Still has the Nature's Grasp as well. I mean, really well done for Maryville, though. They're playing off of the fact that Top has pushed. Niles had a move. Yuji and Spyrax able to collapse as Odat was trying to get a little bit of fruit for himself. Stay topped off mid, and... Uh, end up getting a flash out. Onak can't TP back either, so Spyrax will get, get some free time with that top lane. Or, uh, mid lane. Sorry. Back and forth, uh, a couple plates already going down Spyrax. I've been actually very interested in how often Onak has been forced out of lane. Spyrax has been in solo lane a majority of the time without Onak there. And it's just saying that the pressure is there for Spyrax. He is having a really good Ooh. laning phase. Kind of a bummer missing just out. Yeah, Sedge. Just <laughs> it is always Sedge. Uh, I, I mean, the only th like reason that I might be surprised Spyrax is having a good lane is that he has been playing top lane, but I know that Jace was still in his pool top, so yeah, uh, I'm really not surprised at all to see Spyrax doing well. I mean, again, this is someone that, like, Spyrax was on my list for mid laners that I wanted to see potentially be considered for LCS, of course, going to a Greed school, you know, Spyrax. Um, I, I don't know if that is still something he wants to actively pursue in his future. Didn't have LCS offers this time around, but uh, Spyrax has game. Spyrax is a good player. Uh, so yeah. really good to see him uh, coming back. Mary the little first game back mid, I believe, that I've seen from him. Uh, yeah. Easy peasy. Uh, <laughs> I, I find it interesting as well because... It 
we don't know the machinations, obviously, of Spyrax, but the fact that our players can still play at this level but also be guaranteeing a future for themselves is so cool. And that's why I love having Collegiate in this space, and it's particularly Maryville in the NACL because... Yes, schedules are a little bit more tough. I talked to UG, he's like, ah, it's, it's, it's like being a pro player, except you have to do homework, you have to go to school, you have to do all this stuff. That's not being a pro player. That's, that's adding more to it. And so to yeah. see these guys guaranteeing their future while also still being able to be pretty good gamers, uh, it feels really good for Maryville. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's definitely something, like, as space has changed, that uh, it is honestly kind of exciting this point, because I think this... And a slight aside, I think Seedall is going to be the most competitive it's ever been oh, yeah. this year. Uh, I know that Seedall was mentioned a little bit yesterday. Is that, of course, Wildcard 2-0 over TLC in uh, the waiter game did feature four members Slew from boy. SLU, uh, St. Louis University, who are uh, crosstown rivals to Maryville. Uh, and, and their fifth member, Surdy, also got a win, yeah. just not on the same team. <laughs> yeah, and it was a nice little 4-0 yesterday for the Slew boys, you know. Not too bad, not too bad. But getting back into this one, we have another dragon. We talked about how Maryville University need to put priority on that, and they're doing so by trying to push out mid lane a little bit more. It does look like there's going to be a contest from Rose Thorn and AoE around that pit, though, and especially focusing towards this bot lane right now. Yeah, and uh, uh, this is the timer where you can kind of start to see a Lucian Milio get really aggressive. And well, speaking of aggression, Rose Thorn, he's down a level. He's going to go. Takes a ton of damage there, though. And Spyrex is the first one to make it. Oh, Rose Thorn just gets obliterated. Uh, meanwhile, top okay, side. All out and top side of the map. We got picture in picture. Oh, Zabuno. Oh. Solo Bolo oh. goes to the captain and Niles. Oh, no. And Breezy's in some trouble, too. Chaos is starting to rain true. And all like that, 11 and a half minutes in. It's 5-0 for Maryville. I mean, uh, Maryville, they're the stronger team early on the bot side, not on the top side. Uh, Niles cracking open that window himself. That's nice. But everything toppling in favor of our collegiate boys. As they might be trying to join the Slew Boys of the 4-0. Yeah, they might not only be able to manage the 2-0 themselves, but uh, AoE for me were the favorites coming into this match today. But Maryville you know, announcing this new roster late. Uh, I mean, that's off to a nice start here as they picked for early game, and they're playing early game. As Rose Thorn doesn't quite get the Crescent Guard off in time to deny the Jace damage from that initial Q, and he's yeah. able to bring the hammer down and follow through. And then we're just kind of lost here. Uh, yeah. Breezy gets the ult off late, so isn't able to save Wixie. Uh, and he goes down. I mean, once the Varus falls, there's nothing else cooking. Onat doesn't have access to that. Now, Kyle, mm -hmm. you could get in range to yoink a Varus ult. And then a little bit all over the place here from AoE early. It, it just feels like that entire series of plays was just miscommunication after miscommunication, right? Like, yeah, Breezy's like right behind Rose Thorn, but it's like a second too late. And then the Breath of Life comes out a second too late. Wixie's on the wrong side one second too late. It's just everybody has the same mindset, but the timing was off. And I think that's the biggest difference maker is Maryville do seem on the same page. And rightfully so, they have a lot of time working together. I'm curious seeing Wixie grab the Cyclo Sword first on the Lucian. Uh, so we, we've seen some different Lucian builds. This one uh, very much alt focused as your first auto will uh, actually slow people. Uh, and then, honestly, uh, it's double support item bot again, which is, you know... Rod of Ages, I would oh, 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 they are punishing this very heavily. Ooh, flash. nice little flash, though. Actually gets Onat out of there, so he will survive with that yeah. rod on him. Uh, and Yuji makes a gank in mid lane. Yeah, so uh, kind of going back to the Lucian item here in the bot side. Uh, this sets up really nice for Lucian's ultimate, because the support item he'll grab is the damage amp. So you throw down that auto... You know, you get the slow, you pump your ult. Oh boy. Flash, doesn't matter if you oh. die. And Wixie gets pierced through wow. the heart. And Breezy wow. will join him right in the grave. A double kill for the scariest of Jerry's. And now TP coming in. Rose Thorn is going to flash Instant out flash. preemptively. I love that all in. Oh, all in's everywhere. Niles oh on the top God. side gets another flash out of Zamuto. That all in bot for Maryville was timed so well because Breezy, yeah, he did pop his ult. We didn't have it up in time to save Wixie. It was still on cooldown. So Maryville. Timing up something like that Emilio alt saying, hey, we have ult advantage. We can go. Nice aggressive flash from Scary Jerry. Love to see that from him. And uh, wins all around here for Maryville. This bot lane. We, used to, we were talking in the draft like, oh, yeah, Lucian Emilio is really good. It's, it's like so strong. You get a couple kills down there. Don't matter. And Scary Jerry and Zyko absolutely handling that 2v2. For a bot lane that 
I had a lot of props for as the season was coming to a close last year. Maryville did not have a good year. They had a good close to the year. They did not have a good year as a whole, and I think, or at least good split. And I think to see the continuation of that growth oh, come into a new year, even if it is only one game, like that is huge. And you see the gold difference is also pretty huge. Yeah, gold dip, double dip, it's all in favor of Maryville. Now Spyrax might be under siege. Botlin uh, does bring the hammer down. I, I will say, uh, the one thing that's going, you know, that way of AoE, they already have bounties up, and they do have six grubs. And I gotta say, this might be an uh, interesting mechanic that, you know, I don't, I don't know how much Riot's thought about this. Your ability to farm objective bounties when you do have the grubs up. It could be a nice <laughs> slingshot mechanic back for AoE, who, of course, does have scaling. Absolutely. Zyko now caught in Winnable. transition. We'll yeah. get a handshake. There's the chains of corruption from Onat, though, and an easy takedown should follow afterwards. Zyko just caught out and a shutdown actually going over to Onat of all people. Good find from Rosethorn. Again, AoE, I don't think they're 100% out of this game. I, I do like uh, like Lucian Milio as this game goes on. I think that has the potential to kind of break Maryville later. I don't think Maryville's scaling is terrible by any means, but they do have the poke Ferris and the poke Jace, and I, I want to see Maryville be disciplined enough to get these objectives early and make sure that they can put the poke down on AoE. Scary Jerry's already on like two and a half items now as well. Yep. So we were talking about the Jace being the big poke factor. Well, now it's both Jace and the Varus. And the next objective coming up in 40 seconds. AoE need to have vision here because this is sole point for Maryville. Again, Maryville, the dragon stacking, really important for their composition given uh, the poke. And uh, this who's is driving? really when they spot. Oh, who's driving? Who's driving? Scary, Scary Jerry. Terry. He just got his license. Here we go. Uh -oh. Right into the turret, and now he's in a lot of trouble. But <laughs> luckily, he has the nature's grasp right behind him, and the chains of corruption. Just use all the ulties. The scary Jerry just really wanted to drive the car. Yeah, I, I don't. I, that's not my favorite, uh, you know, uh, opportunity or situation there. But he got out, and uh, the turret, you know, it's low. Uh, unfortunately, though, a scary Jerry has to reset before this dragon. That would have been a really nice dragon timer for MU to hit while the Rumble ults down. I think they're still gonna get it and AoE's going to see, but just to weigh them ever so slightly. Ah, third dragon though, that gives a timer to AoE, especially for an ocean dragon. And uh, you definitely don't want to give nice. that over to Maryville. We do see, now it's just playing with his food, did have to pop the ghost, but good responses from AoE, just trying to find something on the map. Unfortunately, yeah. they have put all the pressure on top side of the map and they are losing a tier two and dragon. I like Psycho to lying in wait yeah, just in case uh, Ronat decides to go in. Yuji will clean this one up for himself, and it looks like we're going to have about a 22 30 uh, soul spawn for Maryville. That's really good that? given their composition. Last game, we were getting like 17 minute first dragons. <laughs> now, well, we get you like know, a 22 minute soul. When it's a Chad game, uh, there's going to be action in the jungle. You know, that's just how it is, we, we, and that, that's fine. We, we do love Chad for that. It, it makes for fun games, and Chad ended up getting the best of them. Uh, you know, the, the invades worked for two of the games. We don't talk about game one. We don't talk about game one. Just, just don't worry about it. We can talk about this game one, though. Uh, as 18 minutes in, we do have that third dragon from Maryville. We also just got second item spikes coming up for Spyrax and Scary Jerry. That Monomune is completed for Spyrax, so the poke's even going to be harder to deal with. And Maryville seem to be the proactive side of things as they're going for oh, a play like onto Samudo. They get him as well. Spyrax does a ton of damage. And a side lane pick means it's easy pickings for Maryville. Love that proactivity from Zyko. Had a good understanding. Saw the Lucian Milio mid. Onat was just bot. That's a free play, and they were able to cash in. Well done from him and Maryville as uh, him and Yuji will continue to try and get uh, some more pressure down. As this, the Andre is now wrapped up on the Maokai. We have seen mostly tank Maokai with the bombies into Frozen Heart Rush, but Yuji opting for a little bit more damage here, having that tank in the Kasante on the top side. Yeah. Milio will get some value with the shields and trying to heal up from the Sapling poke, but very much does fit the identity of what Maryville wants to do, and that is poke. So uh, I, I like yeah. what I'm seeing from Maryville and this execution of the draft. I just want them to continue to hit these windows now. This is where this comp is very oppressive, very strong. And uh, AoE is going to need to A, pay respect, but also B, bide their time to try and get back into this one. That's the hardest thing to do right now is just buy your time. But I think buying time is a, uh, a luxury at this point. We'll see if they can afford that. 
Perryville University as a whole, though, like since they came into an ACL, it's been really cool to see their growth. Ooh, Spyrax so taking a one v one. Let's have a little bit of damage following up as Rose Thorn ends up taking the brunt of it. Meanwhile, got a one v one in the bot side. There's the equalizer. Use the Mudo one to get it, but it's Zemudo looking like a Niles one. Oh, little flashes come out, at least from Zamudo, will be all she wrote there. TP is coming in the mid lane, though, from Onet. Oh, he's going by. Yeah, he's trying to hunt. I, I, the, so the one thing that's good for AoE is that, you know, it talks about them being respectful of what they're going up against. Uh, you don't have to worry about Baron. There, there's no way that this MU comp is ever going to try to do Baron. It, it, it's, it's just not feasible for them, especially at this point of the game. Uh, so... You know, Onak can't afford to take TPs like that and look. Not able to find yeah. anything, as that was a little bit late. But uh, I don't think Maryville are touching Baron. I think the angle is Soul, and then just choke AoE out of Baron, that topside river, and that's when you can maybe get a look at it. Let's see if that does end up being the case. We finally got the Rapid Fire completed for Wixie, so he will have the Blood Song plus the Rapid Fire, so a little bit of distance there. Meanwhile, Onat try to go for the chains. Does not right. end up connecting. Still flash out of the Varus, that's nice for AoE. Uh, makes him they burn a there? target. I mean, they could have to. This is a weird window for them to do so. As I think they saw the Crab is now in control in Maryville. Everyone's on the top side of the map. Maryville uh, fixing lanes at the moment. Spyrax, he's playing smart. He's retreating. He's using that huge, that giant new wall on the top side to not show. <laughs> um, as he will not be getting caught out in the side lane here. And Maryville still playing really disciplined. I, I think they're doing a really nice job. Yeah, they are. And I think that's something we saw a lot more of at the later half of the year for Maryville, at least, especially at the later half of the season. But this team is just a talent pipeline. And uh, we're going to see that talent uh, pipeline continue here. Oh, no, I think we got a disconnect from the server there. <laughs> Scary Terry's on a rampage. Oh, he's going to die. Okay, well, uh, hopefully, you know, there's not much more fighting happening. But it looks like there is a 3v3 happening in the topside jungle. And actually, in Maryville, not able to come away with much more. But Scary Jerry ended up getting his fourth kill of the game on Rose Thorn. And that Miramana is going to be coming in pretty shortly for him. Unless he can join Spyrax on that. And Maryville, I mean, they continue to play this one really clean. Now, I will say that uh, taking this turret, I mean, obviously gold, never bad. Uh, but this does mean that they can't really fit in resets before the Ocean Dragon. So Scary Jerry, he will base. There's a lot of control down here. I don't know if AoE can really walk in. I mean, they're down 5.5k gold. But uh, Ocean Soul, it is, in a way, a state of mind. Uh, I don't think it's the, the strongest soul in the game. But uh, I don't think you want to give that over to Maryville either with a poke comp. As Ocean Soul is a state it, of it's mind. It's a state of mind, yeah. Ocean Soul is a state of mind always. <laughs> Okay, well, you learn something to do every day. Okay. Wixie is already half health now. Here we go. Just one poke. And yeah, the oh Scare Jerry boy. is now on a rampage. All right. Here comes the rest of the avalanche as Spyrax hammer falls right onto Zamudo. And Oof. already, your front line is gone for AoE. So, instant start at the Baron here for Maryville. Man, I really like watching Spyrax play Jace. He's, Me too. He's good. He, he's, he's a good Jace, good. yeah. But can we just say, like, the amount of talent on this Maryville roster, like, Clerky, has, we all know that Clerky has already done an incredible job at Maryville University, but it seems like every year it gets better. There's just bigger talent that comes to the fold, and the fact that they have the duo of Yuji Spyrax now, obviously Spyrax was supposed to be at top side, uh, but the fact that Yuji has come to the school, you still have the development of Scary Jerry and Zyko. It's looking like 2024 could be a big collegiate year, not only in CeeLo. I mean, tune in. W Wixie's also on a team uh, for Seedlaw. A lot of our Challengers players are going to be here. As, uh, of course, Rally Cry. Baron Buff picked up on the side of Maryville University, who continue to make quick work of this game. AoE Giant Souls. And that is truly the consolation prize. And we'll see how much Maryville can get now. Uh, as I got to give them props too, man. Uh, this Quidditch team, I mean, this poke composition, I've seen some LCS teams not play it, uh, you know, uh, that yeah. well. I think Maryville's actually done a really nice job of staying disciplined. It helps that they got solo kills on uh, both top and bot side. It made the game a lot easier for them, and the Spyrax is kind of just owning mid. So. No caveats, Covey. No caveats. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Boy. Yeah, Breezy just walked right into that one. Tidal Wave coming over the back of it, though, at least. Or oh, the hostile takeover, Lord. rather. Breezy still dies, oh, and then God. immediately Wixie joins him. So at least in death, they are still duos. That's multiple times now that both of them died right back to back. Uh, Onat, not gonna get hit by the Chains of Corruption. Still chased down because MU is running wild. 
Another kill goes over. It is 13 to 1. Not a perfect game, but it's feeling like it. I mean, this is a free game here for Maryville. I, I mean, they just ran with this one. It, it feels like uh, every lane went their way. You have a farming uh, Maokai behind that. You're chilling, man. This is an easy <laughs> game for Maryville. They're making it look like such. Uh, what a statement from them. Obviously, they were kind of late to announce their roster, uh, what they were running for challengers, because we talked about it earlier. A lot of talented players over at Maryville, uh, as you know, some of them aren't gonna like on this NACL team. But man, they, these guys are oh playing God. really good. Freezy had to instantly breath of life. Yuji does get a little low there. There's that damage from the calling you were highlighting earlier with his combo of weaponry. It is still the siege though in mid lane that they can't really do anything about. The equalizer comes down. Hands of corruption right out the back of it, and Wixie another half health trade. Oh, oh, oh that. O Nation is coming up for a flank. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though, because Niles is on the other side. And the flank of the flank. Your nation is burned oh, in no. front of you. As there's no one left as Onat comes in. He's all by himself. And the Mongolian monster, Yuji, has gotten a triple kill. Maryville finishing out game one in style. Yeah, good luck fighting uh, Kasante as Silas, too. This, this is why I was like, you know, hey, maybe that Chase could go top. Yeah, you, when you get like a match that looks like this. I was going to clean that one up along with the rest of Maryville. What a debut for the collegiate squad that we have in Challengers yeah. League. They were in that promotion tournament. They earned their way, or yeah, they earned their way back in. Uh, and yeah, I mean, looks like they're off to get, really, we're basing. All right, I guess we're basing. Come on, guys. No, no, they, they, that timer's too small. We're basing. Uh, we got more game left There's a little turret left there. Anyways, this was the attempt from AOE, but you see one little poke is already putting Breezy to half, and all it takes is for Maryville to get a good flank on an angle that AOE was looking for. All right, this is also a concern that I have with this comp. Like, the Rumble doesn't really have a lot of things to play off of. I thought that the Silas would fix that. And, I mean, Onad, he's trying for the Hail Mary flank here. Uh, he's still wrapping around, but... AOE overplayed their hand. They didn't really let Onak get in a position in a giant Renato ult from Psycho, too. I think he's had a yep. really nice game. Uh, of course, Agreed. those bot lane kills started with Psycho hitting level two, found the kill. Breezy and Wixie didn't respect that spacing, and things got haywire from there. Did indeed. And uh, you see Onad just trying to put up as much of a fight as he can, but Niles is having a good day on Cassante so far. And Okay, I say that as he misses the ability. <laughs> we're just gonna watch the rest of this fight. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're right back to live and Maryville are on the siege. All right, Maokai all for Onat. Maybe if him and Zamudo can sync something up, there's hope, but I don't think there's any hope at this point. I think that the Snowy Illusion are not gonna be allowed to get online. It's Maryville. Uh, okay, Shock Blast dodge. Here we go. That's one all. Nature Grass coming across. There's the Equalizer to try to clear the wave. Yeah. Onat gonna use his. Angel's Grass on the other side. Oh, Rosethorn. He goes in with the Crescent Guard. They actually get UT here, but I don't think it matters because the back line is still just ripping him to shreds as it is all Spyrax, all Scary Jerry. And now Niles going in. 1v3 will be burned down. So a shutdown well, ends up going over to Zamudo and an overextension for Maryville. I guess things got a little silly there uh, as Niles just decided to give a freebie over. Maryville, they, they do have this dragon up. Uh, they, they, they could do some work here. It's 15 seconds. I don't think AoE can get out of the base to get there, so this should be Soul for Maryville, and another step towards wrapping up this game, but uh, getting a little, a little messy here. Making it slow and steady. Is it really uh, slow and steady if we just send it over a wall and die? So, is it, is it, so if we're comparing this to, like, the Tortoise and the Hare race, is Maryville the Hare? Where they like got to the finish line oh, super early and then just like waited around. That implies an AOE win. It does. I, I, I'm keen on my children's <laughs> books reading. All right. I see. You aren't keeping them up with to that date. one. AOE get a TP back. Oh, oh my God. God! Scary Jerry gets the steal, and you better be frightened now. Maryville looking to clean up this fish in a barrel situation as Freezy gets himself back in the pit. Flashes back out of the pit, and Niles is just 1v4 in the back line, as there's not much left to do. Spyrax kills Onat, Wixie all by himself, not oh, even his Lord. Melio around to support him, and Maryville have made a statement with game number one. Well, you know, uh, we saw Spyrax bring the hammer down early, and he's still bringing it down late. As uh, Spyrax, welcome back to Midday, man. It's good to see you competing in Challengers League with Maryville. And uh, Sim and Yuji, they found a new home. They're going to start off 1-0. 
So Yuji looking really good in his debut for Maryville. The bot lane still kicking teeth in in this year. And I love to see the come up from this collegiate squad. Maryville will go up 1-0 over AoE. But with this AoE roster, you always know there's a potential for comeback. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we already treated the one game three today. Uh, we'll see if we get another one. As, uh, not much else to say about that one, man. That that was a uh, was a hand fist in there for Maryville. Holy cow! <laughs> that was our game number one of this best of three. That is it, though. We'll be right back after a short little break for game number two. So don't go anywhere.